What if you could tell me your name and give us a little bit of background on who you are? My name is Mary Klein. I grew up in a small community in Michigan. Fowler was the name of the city. Then I moved to Lansing. I know that you're a recovering alcoholic, and I was wondering if you could explain to us a little bit about what got you started drinking in the first place. I started drinking because when I went to the residential school in Flint, Michigan School for the Deaf, it was because of peer pressure. I was just drinking. I liked the feeling of being high. I didn't think that I was addicted. I was drinking socially. And then I went to college in Rochester, New York, NTID. I started drinking and kept drinking and I felt the drinking was an escape from my inner problems. And I just kept on drinking. And I couldn't stop. How long have you been an alcoholic? Um, for a pretty long time. I started drinking when I was about 15. But it got worse when I was in college. I guess I was about 18 or 19 at the time. I wasn't too bad when I was around people or working, but after I graduated from college and moved back to Michigan, I started drinking a lot more. And I've been addicted for, oh, almost 25 or 30 years. When did you finally realize that you needed to stop drinking altogether? It was tough for me to try to stop drinking. I tried to not think about it. I tried to stop drinking, but I couldn't. The booze beat me. It was like an escape from my problems. I felt peaceful. I wasn't drinking in front of other people. I was a secret drinker, and I was an alcoholic for a long time, and I just kept drinking more and more and more. And I really struggled with trying to stop, but I couldn't. A friend of mine came up to me and said, you're an alcoholic. I said, no, I was in denial. And that was my boss. And she said, I smell it when you're drinking, when you're teaching too. She said, you have two choices, teach and stop drinking or I'll fire you. I tried, but I couldn't. I never drank while I was teaching, no. But when I was out, I would drink. My friends tried to convince me to stop drinking, but I couldn't. The more they tried to convince me, the worse I drank. My boss got, boss got fed up. She said she'd been in an alcoholic program for seven years. And she wanted me to go to start going to AA meetings. And I got angry. My boss said, go. I was angry, wanted to argue with her, but I'm alcoholic, yeah, is what she said. And she said, I've stopped drinking for almost seven years. And that's when I had almost hit rock bottom. I said, okay, fine, I'll go to an AA meeting, but I don't want to go to one with just deaf people. I want to feel free. So a friend of mine said they'd go interpret for me. They signed enough, so it was okay with me. So I knew it was time for me to stop drinking. And I've stopped since then. I know that Alcoholics Anonymous follows a 12-step program. Can you tell us if that was easy for you or hard for you and what got you through it? The 12 start steps are not easy. First of all, you have to admit you're an alcoholic. And when you go to a meeting, you say, yes, I'm an alcoholic, my name is. And then we would take turns going around, each telling our own story. So it was my turn, and I said, finally admitted it, yes, I'm an alcoholic. My friend was so relieved. It wasn't easy for me. Then I went on to step two, step three, and on and on and on. And the step that I struggled with the most was forgiveness. So I wrote letters to all my friends and my family and asking them to forgive me and support me. 
my friend said she would be my co-sponsor. I would have two co-sponsors. One would be a hearing person that didn't sign, and the other one would be my friend who did sign. The hearing woman wanted to be involved. Okay, fine. So I was okay with her being one-on-one -on -one with me. I didn't want to be in front of the other woman because I just wanted to admit to my one co-sponsor that signed. And I didn't feel comfortable with it. The one-on-one -on -one is fine, but with someone else, yes. I don't mean to be insulting, but she suggested I go to a deaf AA meeting, and I just didn't feel comfortable with that because they would know my name. And I felt, after I felt more comfortable with it, I would admit it to other people. Inside, I hadn't developed my confidence at that time yet. I was still struggling at that time, so I decided to just do the one-on-one, -on -one, and that was much better for me. How long has it been since you've had a drink? June 6, 2001 was my last drink. At that time, I had to tell myself, I had to think with my heart, not with my brain. I decided June 6, 2001 was when I would end, and that was 11 years ago last week, and I'm very happy that I stopped. In the beginning, when I first stopped, I struggled for three years. I, I'd smell a drink and I'd want a taste of it. I'd go shopping and see the alcohol on the shelves. I'd tell myself, I have to think positive, think with my heart, not with my mind. I'm an addict, and if, if I had problems, I would talk with a friend. Another example is commercials on TV. I would sp see people drinking and say, oh, I'd like a drink, but it, I just decided I didn't want to. I wasn't going to have any more. My friend really inspired me and helped me a lot.